Good morning. Uh, morning, everyone. It is so lovely that you've joined us this morning. Welcome to St Melita's Online Worship. My name's Lucy, and whether this is your first time joining us or you're regular every week, it's really lovely to have you here. I hope you've enjoyed some of the lovely sunny weather we've had this week. We've had fun, haven't we, in the paddling we pool? Have. Um, if your hay fever has been bad like me, hopefully the rain has sorted that out a little bit and you're feeling a little bit better. Uh, my name's Stu, and together we help to lead the St Melita's Church family. Uh, later on in our service we're going to be uh, sharing communion together uh, so if you haven't got it already do grab some bread, uh, some juice or some wine uh, so you can take part with us a little bit later on. Uh, this morning we're going to sing in just a moment but before we got there I thought we might just do a little bit of a, a pop quiz, oh, okay. uh, a lockdown quiz as it were. Um, so I was going to ask you a few questions, Lucy. Right, this was and not planned in advance, guys, just like to say. I didn't yes, give her any warnings, so it's all spontaneous. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what's the favourite place that you've discovered in lockdown? Ooh, favourite place I've discovered in lockdown. I would say um, Black Park, which is just up the A40 a little bit from here. And um, we all went paddling in the in the lake. That was probably a, a bit of a find that we've never done before. Yeah. I don't know why we've never done it before. It's only 20 minutes away, but... Good morning. Um, it was a good morning. Um, what's your, been your favourite food during lockdown? What's got chocolate, you through? Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah. Without a doubt. I'm sure many of you out there can relate to that. Do put on the chat what your favourite food or where your favourite place is. We'd like to hear about it. What's been your favourite song during lockdown? Favourite song? I know it's really cliche, but I would say the Blessing song. Good Definitely. Choice. Without a doubt. Good choice. And then one last question. Um, no. You've been doing most of the homeschooling, well, all the homeschooling, let's be honest. Yes. Um, <laughs> well said. Uh, and obviously that's been quite educational for you. What's one fact or something that you've learnt from homeschooling you didn't know before? A fact. Do you know what? This is a really random fact. That on the clock, like the, the general clock face, that if you take away, if you add up the numbers across from each other, they all add up to 13. Did you know that? I did not so know. like 12 plus 1 is 13 and then 11 plus 2 is 13. There you go. That's my little thing I've learned that I didn't there know before. Go. If perhaps yeah. you learned that for the first time, uh, you thought you were just tuning into church, but yeah. you've got an educational experience as well. Shall we worship now? I think I we think should, don't should, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you pray for us? I'm going to pray for us. Jesus, I thank you so much that you're with us. Will you just come now, Lord, by your spirit? Will you just fill every single home with your presence, that we will know you. We won't just hear about you. We don't won't just watch on a screen, that we will hear from you and we will know you close to us this morning. Lord, I pray that you just lift up our voice in praise to you. What an eternity wide Don't open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. darkness you shine, and out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, there's none like you, we say, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, we sing, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, what's in the power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then 
than what can stand against And if our God is for us, then He could ever stop us And if our God is with us, then what can stand against Oh, I will stand against oh. all God our God Our God is greater our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And now it's time for our family song. So let's get up off the sofa and let's worship God together. It's a topsy-turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place Where the weak are strong, the first are last And the slowest one wins the race It's an upside down, an inside out Back to front kind of thing because everything is possible in the presence of the King And when a mustard seed of faith can move a mountain And two little loaves of bread can feed a thousand men When a small boy with his sling can knock a giant flat And a man can sleep inside a lion's den it's a topsy-turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place Where the weak are strong, the first are last And the slowest one wins the race It's an upside down, an inside out Back to front kind of thing Because everything is possible In the presence of the king And when the lame begin to dance And a blind man starts to see And a tankard full of water Becomes a vintage red When a faithful fisherman Can walk upon a lake And from his grave A man wakes from the dead Ew. It's a topsy-turvy Curly, whirly, crazy Kind of place Where the weak are strong The first are last And the slowest one wins the race It's an upside down And inside out Back to front kind of thing because everything is possible in the presence of the king Now when the lame begin to dance And the blind man starts to see And a tankard full of water Becomes a vintage red When a faithful fisherman Could walk upon a lake and from his grave a man wakes from the dead it's a topsy-turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place Where the weak are strong, the first are last And the slowest one wins the race It's an upside down, an inside out Back to front kind of thing Because everything is possible In the presence of the King We're now going to move into that part of our service where we're going to share bread and wine. In a moment, we'll say together the communion prayer. But before we do that, you need to make sure that you've got some bread and fruit juice or whatever available. And I'm going to suggest that we're just quiet for a moment before we move on to that communion prayer. So let's just be quiet for a moment. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him 
and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So come, come and take bread and wine, not because you are strong but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come not because you are worthy to approach him, but because he died for sinners. Come because he loves you and gave his life for you. So come now and do share the bread and, and wine or juice with whoever you're gathered with now. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, in Saviour's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Yes, you are Lord of all. My hope is built on nothing less 
darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Through every high and stormy gale, my anger holds within the veil. Yes, my Jesus, we thank you that we're able to share communion in our homes. And we just thank you so much that you died for every single one of us on the cross, mm. that you took all our guilt and our shame, Lord, that you put it upon yourself so we can know you as our saviour for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Friends, as uh, many of you will know, as a church family, uh, year in, year out, we support uh, the work of the uh, Kigami uh, Diocese in Rwanda uh, and all that they do. And uh, a few weeks ago, we uh, took a special collection to support them, particularly at this time during uh, the pandemic and the lockdown that's going on in Rwanda at the moment. And we, uh, a really fortunate musician, have been sent a few videos and pictures which show us a little bit of uh, how that money's been spent and how it's helping people. So we're going to uh, watch them together now. Uh, the Bishop of Chigeme Dices. Chigeme Dices is one of the 11 dioceses of uh, Anglican Church of Rwanda. And Chigeme Dices is also affected uh, because of the uh, COVID 19 from March uh, this year. Uh, where we have many people that are staffing, uh, have the problem that uh, about uh, food shortages, and uh, uh, others have uh, lost their their jobs. But we we are uh, here here at the the Dyson head office where we. We are with this group. Uh, we are distributing food. Uh, food. We praise God and we thank uh, uh, Him because because we God gave us friends uh, like Jeremy, Jeremy and Margaret uh, in the UK. They are our ambassadors. They are. Uh, our diocese and the commissioners in the UK uh, because they have been always supporting us 
in the, in the different activities. But now uh, we praise God because they have sent uh, money uh, to so that we may use them uh, use it to buy food to our our people that are, are meeting the, the different problems uh, of uh, from COVID-19 and also uh, from them we were able to have uh, Saint Meritus, Meritus Church uh, as our friend, as a, the partner of Kigeme Dices. They have sent uh, 2,500 uh, 2, pounds that we are using to buy food. This will help people uh, to get food and they are very happy. We praise God and we thank you. Uh, may God bless you all for this tremendous work you are doing for Chigeme Dices. Amen. Many of you will be aware of the protests and marches that have been happening all across America and across the whole world at the moment due to the tragic murder of George Floyd. And we, both Stu and I, are, are really proud to be leading a multicultural church here at St Melitis. Yeah, it's a church that's been built on an incredible legacy of a welcome to all over the generations. Uh, St Melitis, as some of you may know, was the first church in Ealing to welcome people from a West Indian uh, background mm -hmm. uh, back in the 1950s. Uh, but as someone said to me this week, uh, this uh, situation uh, just makes you aware that none of this has gone away, mm -hmm. uh, both in America and here in the UK. Um, and we are very aware that this is an issue that we still have so much work to do on. It's a deeply personal issue uh, for many of you. Um, and this last week will have brought up uh, painful memories from the past and also the present. And we want to say really, as the leaders of this church committee, yeah. Uh, community that we know we have so much more to do to address racism and injustice. Uh, we have to listen, we have to learn uh, from those who've had experience of this uh, both here in Hamwell and beyond. Uh, we want to address our lack of awareness, we want to keep working to ensure that St Malitis is a place where everyone feels welcome, where everyone can call it home and where everyone can play a full part and mm -hmm. uh, we want to build on the heritage and legacy of the past uh, so we know that there is so much more to do we need to speak out against injustice in our society we need to repent biblically that means to not just say sorry but to turn around and to live differently we need to repent and live differently uh, we need to recognize that this is not just a problem in another country somewhere across the world mm -hmm. but it's here in hamwell in our city mm -hmm. And we need to repent uh, as a city, as a nation and as individuals. Uh, we need to learn to do better and to seek to build a more just society for all, because that is what the kingdom of God is about. Righteousness and justice. Uh, so, friends, we want to invite you to come on a journey uh, with us. We may not be able to meet in person right now. But our mission hasn't changed. We're still seeking to build uh, the kingdom of God here in Hamwell and beyond to become a more Christ-like community. One where everyone of every background, of every culture is welcome. Uh, a place where we can all call home. Uh, so I want to invite you, like us, to stop, uh, to reflect, to listen, uh, to pray and to act. So friends, conscious of all that, uh, we're going to turn to prayer now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, as we come to you, we remember your word in James chapter 4, which says, Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. We bring to you, first of all, the situation in the United States of America, where the murder of George Floyd, Floyd and all that has come about since then, violence and racism, even from the police, injustice, disorder and conflict, awful scenes that even here in the UK we feel and see the anger and, and grief that has come to this country. We lift it to you and we pray for Christians there that you would give Christians in the United States your wisdom and confidence 
to be bringers of peace and makers of peace to their communities and to their nation. We pray that you would give those in positions of power the moral courage they need, the right words at the right time, and enable them to take the right actions. Lord, we know that you are with the poor and the oppressed. Bring your comfort and your peace, especially we ask to those injured or bereaved in the trouble. Bring also your power, we ask, Lord, to crush the evil of racism, which has no place in your kingdom. We ask that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in the United States of America. We think to the situation in Africa with coronavirus, where it's spreading and expected to spread further. We ask that you would give governments of the countries their clear thought and help them to provide for their people medical supplies, food and treatment for other diseases as well, um, as these are causing big problems. We pray especially for the countries of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria and Ivory Coast. We pray too that you would help your church in these nations rise in support for their own communities with the love and compassion that you give them. Even in this time, we pray that you would bring peace and a harvest of people turning to you and finding salvation. We think to our own uh, nations in the United Kingdom. We ask that you would bless all of our politicians, all of our leaders at Westminster, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and our own council in Ealing. Give them all that they need, provide for them, we ask. We pray again that you would sustain and refresh our NHS and care staff working so hard at this time. We pray too that you would give grace and peace to teachers and especially head teachers in the coming weeks of schools beginning to reopen. For each of us, Lord Jesus, help us today to remember you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders, and leading each of us and your church together in your unfailing love. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your peace. Amen. Our reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Don't you know, haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. Young men can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I wonder when you last made a promise. Maybe uh, you've promised uh, a friend or someone in your family that as soon as all this is over, you will uh, get together and, and hang out and have fun together. Maybe you've promised uh, yourself that you'll stop eating quite so much chocolate, obviously when lockdown is over. Uh, maybe you've uh, bought a house or you've signed a loan and in doing so you've promised to pay back a certain amount of money. Uh, we make promises all the time, don't we? For many of us, the, the most uh, public demonstration of a promise we'll ever see is a, a wedding service. Uh, and one of the great joys of my job is uh, those times when I'm able to marry people. And uh, I get them every time to uh, think about the gravity of what they're promising to one another promising to love one another for life in sickness and in health through good times and bad. And I want them to appreciate the gravity of it because promises are powerful, aren't they? Promises bind us to one another. Promises build trust. They let us know that certain things are going to happen no matter what. That we're going to be treated in a certain way. That Promises give us hope for the future. And they sustain us when things are difficult. 
This morning we're starting a, a, a new series of talks exploring some of the promises that God makes in the Bible. Promises to his people, promises that sustain us in difficult times, promises that give us hope for the future. Promises which speak to us today. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at some of these promises, the promise of blessing, of rescue, of peace, of healing. And today we're thinking about the promise that God makes in the Bible to give strength to those who are weary. We had our Bible reading read by Gifty just a few moments ago. And this is written at a time when the people of God are effectively in exile in Babylon, far from home. They've lost something of their culture. And for 50 years now, uh, they have lived far away from home because of their sin and disobedience to God. Jerusalem, their, their home city, has been destroyed. They've lost their homes, their culture, their sense of identity. And they're effectively slaves. They're an oppressed and marginalised people, not free to choose how they live their lives. And they feel abandoned by God. Uh, in verse 27, just before the verses that gift you read for us, uh, we read this. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. They're complaining. Their way is hidden. They feel disregarded. Put yourself in their shoes for a moment. Things are not good for you, for your family or for your nation. There's very little hope. The future seems bleak. And your greatest longing is that things might change. Yet you come to a point where you're struggling to believe that this is ever going to happen and you're tired you feel weak you feel like giving up but into this situation God speaks God makes a promise we hear this those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let me just make a few observations about this short passage. It, it, firstly, it's written to a people who are starting to believe that God doesn't see or hear them, that perhaps he's tired or, or, or run out of steam, giving up on them. But he reassures them. He says, no, I have not forgotten you. There are no problems I can't overcome. Verse 28, we're told that God does not grow tired or weary. Why? Because he is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. We can be assured that God hears and sees our every cry. Secondly, second observation, God reassures us. Things may look bleak at the moment, but he says, I'm bigger than those circumstances. He says uh, that his understanding, none of us can fathom. The good news, and this is really good news, is that God is far, far bigger than any one of us. And the implication of that, I think, is that although it may look like things are never going to change, God is always at work. God is always at work, working in ways that we could never imagine. And my third observation is this. He promises strength to those who need it. Strength to endure. Strength to those who will look to him, who will hope in him, who will trust in him, who will wait on him. We have this beautiful picture in these uh, short verses, verses of an eagle flying once again, of someone running without needing to stop. Strength is what we need when we feel desolate, 
when we feel like giving up. God is promising in this passage to his people that he will renew them. He will bring change. That's who he is. He's the promise maker, the the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. And, you know, I think that's really good news for us today. Don't we need to hear that? Because he's the same God yesterday, today and forever. My guess is that whoever you are this morning, you're facing some sort of challenge. And in every single challenge we come across, there come points where we feel like we can't go on anymore. We feel like it's just not going to happen. And we feel like giving up. All of us, my guess is that we face some sort of battle right now. And your longing is that things will be different, perhaps in your own life, perhaps in the world around you. Maybe for you, it's a very personal challenge. That habit that you wish you didn't do, that you just can't seem to shake. Maybe it's your emotional or or mental health. Maybe it's something physical. Maybe it's your finances and you're worried about those. Maybe you've got a longing for someone you love, who you care for, to come to know Jesus. And you've prayed and prayed and it just hasn't happened. And you feel like giving up. Maybe for you, it's a deep ache for justice in this world. Truth is, there are times in every challenge when we feel like we can't go on. And the good news for us this morning is that God's promise is whatever we are facing, we are not alone. He has not forgotten us. He promises that he is working even when it doesn't seem like it. And he promises that he will renew us, that he will give us strength. With God, rescue is always at hand. His promise is renewal. He is the God who's always working to renew us as individuals, to renew communities, to to renew this world and to renew his church. How do we come to know this renewing? Isaiah tells us in this passage that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You can equally translate that as those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Or those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. And you see, a promise always involves two parties, doesn't it? God says, I will keep my side, but you need to partner with me. Come to me. The way we know this renewing, this strength is when we hope in him. When we give him our attention, when we look to him. Many of you who know me will know that that I love to run. Uh, And one of the things I found with running long distances is that if you don't refuel regularly, if you don't drink, if you don't eat, you quickly run out of steam and have to stop. We need, if you're running, to take on board regular fuel. If I don't feed on the right thing, if I don't drink enough water, I'll hit the wall and have to stop. What I feed on when I'm running determines what I can do. So here's my question for you and for me this morning. With whatever challenge you're facing, what are you feeding on right now? What are you spending your time and attention? What are you taking in? So easy, isn't it, in these times to take in so much news, so much social media, so much Netflix. And those things are not bad in and of themselves, of course. But we can, if we're not careful, find ourselves overwhelmed by worries and concerns. I know for myself, even this week, that's been the case. Uh, Earlier this week, I was really struggling, feeling really down and just desolate. And and part of that was right lament for the sake of the state of this world. But, you know, when it gets to a point of despair, we've gone past where God wants us to be. God wants us to lament, to cry out to him, to feel pain. 
but not to despair. And I was reflecting on what was I feeding on? And I think I was feeding on the wrong things for too long. I'm realising that maybe I need to spend more time feeding on him, waiting on him, hoping in him. Simple things like dwelling in his word and on his promises. If you're struggling to do that right now, if you find yourself distracted and really struggling to spend time with the Lord, let me just encourage you in a few things. There's a wonderful app that's been developed by uh, the 24-7 prayer team called Lectio 365. You can download it. And every day is a very simple reflection and meditation. It just takes a few minutes. So it's a wonderful way of just stilling our hearts and allowing our strength to be renewed. Or you could try the, the Bible in one year uh, by the team at HDB. It's a wonderful way of reading scripture every day with a little bit of commentary. I love to take walks, to get outside, uh, to remind myself of God's majesty and his power. You see, here's the thing. As we remind ourselves of who God is, as we feed on what he's done in the past, we're given assurance of his presence in the future. And we're given fresh hope. What we feed on will either strengthen us or weaken us. Friends, let me say this to you. God is with you. He is for you. He is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And he is working. And my prayer for us is that we would, whatever challenges we're facing at the moment, Feed on him. Find our strength renewed as we do so. Take heart, friends. He promises that he will renew the strength of those who hope in him. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this promise the promise of strength for those who wait on you, who hope in you. And even now in these few minutes, as we just take some time to be still, we pray that by your spirit, you would come afresh to us. Come and meet with us. Renew our hope, we pray. Friends, as we sing together now, I just encourage you, to ask the Lord to renew you this morning, to give you fresh strength, fresh hope. Let's worship. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the do you thirst for the drink from the world? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, 
Du art a savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord. So friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace, his strength and his joy this week. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love and care for this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Take care. Have a good week.